Hey everybody, Steph here. So I figured I'd do a what I learned of Python in 2016 and 17 videos since I've done C++, Java, JavaScript, I didn't do Java, but JavaScript, PHP. So the short answer is it depends on the type of work that you want to do. This is usually the answer, of course, with any programming language. When you are choosing any technology, you have to consider, number one, the type of work that you want to do, because you got to like what you do. And number two, you got to look at your local market demands. Look at the local market around you, where, wherever you happen to live, and you should make your choice based on that. Having said that, Python has a huge market potential because it's so widely used. Python is used not just in web app creation. In terms of web apps, the biggest one I know of is uh, Instagram, Pinterest, uh, original Google was done with Python, and it's used in many of the sites. Now, unlike PHP, to get Python on the web, it takes a little bit more work because with PHP, it was designed from the get-go to be a web programming language where Python was really a systems level language or a general purpose language. What do I, what do I mean by system level language? Python was used, well, is used quite a bit as uh, what they would call a scripting language. Okay, that's two nerd terms in a row. Basically, you would use Python to automate things on a server. Now, it could be automating just basic server processing, like sending out messages and stuff. It could be used for scanning directories. It could be used for certain types of files and cleaning up things. It could be used to automate software, very complex apps. For instance, a friend of mine works in the film industry, and they have very powerful apps that will process the video, and they use Python code to control the app in a very uh, detailed way because to set up all kinds of click all kinds of buttons would be too much work so they write the python code and it controls the app the rendering app in its details python is also used in robotics to control robots it's used in iot internet of things it's used a lot in scientific uh, experiments it's used to uh, process data derived from uh, from whatever type of scientific work you happen to be doing. So it's very popular in that regard. It's also very popular in schools and educational settings because Python is a very approachable language. The Python syntax, syntax is just a nerd word for code. The code that you write in Python or the Python code is actually very, very simple to read. It doesn't have um, funny symbols like you see in Java or JavaScript or PHP and it's a very expressive language. I've actually been very impressed at how expressive it is. What do I mean by expressive? What I mean is that with very few lines of Python code you can get a lot done. Um, I'm going to be doing some comparisons soon, some videos and this is uh, all because as you may or may not know, I'm building a new Python course because I've had institutional clients of mine, schools, who requested that I do build one. Now, when I build my courses for Studio Web, anybody who's used to do web will tell you that they're much, much, much different from your typical video course that you see on YouTube or any of the other course providers up there. I've stepped it up five notches. And uh, so the learning experience with a studio web-based course, regardless of the language, whether it be HTML5, JavaScript, PHP, SQL, or whatever, Python coming out soon, uh, is far more involved, it's far better. Now, uh, as, but to get that extra boost, there's a lot more work involved in putting out a course for studio web, literally like uh, three, four, five times the work that it takes to just to put out your standard video tutorial or video course. Anyway, back to Python. Yeah, it's a general purpose language. I would characterize it so it could be used in many different areas. Uh, as I said, robotics, software automation, web app creation, uh, server automation. It could be used in IoT. Um, you could use uh, you could use Python in uh, controlling Raspberry Pi computers. It's really, really 
uh, been adopted in many different places. And, and I have to say, I've been putting together my course, experimenting with different things, looking deeper into the Python world. And I've been pretty impressed about how uh, approachable uh, they've made, well, the nerds around Python have made Python in terms of, you know, how good the language is. Now, you may or may not know, I remember back going years ago, when I looked at Python the first time many years ago, I was looking at a Python web framework called Django. And, uh, and I decided not to go with it because uh, it required huge amount of resources, meaning CPU and memory, to get anything done with Python. It was a very slow language, uh, especially when compared to Java or PHP. And so I didn't go with it, even though the language itself and the uh, libraries and its flexibilities is very impressive. And that's still the case today in terms of raw speed at runtime, meaning when you're actually running the code in real life, Python is relatively slow compared to PHP or Java. But at the, on the flip side, Python's got all kinds of advantages, which I outline a few things. So it's something to consider. Uh, that said, I've always said that speed of runtime for most people these days for most apps, whether it be web apps or uh, controlling a robot, speed is becoming less, less of an issue because processors are so powerful today that uh, it's becoming a non-issue. So something, something to keep in mind though, Python does run more slowly than other alternatives. Uh, the closest Python comes to in terms of languages is something called Ruby. Now, Ruby was very popular, in the, fairly popular rather, in the web space with Ruby on Rails. And the Ruby language is very similar to Python in certain respects, although there are some significant differences, uh, specifically terminator statements. Now, I remember basically with Python, they make use of white space and line breaks to, to tell the Python uh, app, the interpreter that reads the Python code. You see, Python like so many other programming languages today, they're not just a coding language. There's an app that will process the code, and they'll call this the interpreter. So you got a Ruby interpreter, you got a Python interpreter, you got a PHP interpreter, you, you got a JavaScript interpreter, or an engine, some people might call it. Anyway, so uh, with Ruby, and I only played around Ruby in the past, I, you know, again, because of speed issues and other things, I never jumped into it professionally, but, uh, they have this and they use an end uh, uh, keyword to end off uh, functions, for example, whereas Python uses white space. So it could be use of the white space could be a little confusing, perhaps. Now, this is where the Ruby and the Python people will do battle like so many nerds will battle about which language is best and which is no, bit, no good. And I have to say that in terms of uh, having a nice end keyword at the end of a function, would be uh, something I would prefer, but you gotta understand my perspective. I come from a Java perspective, which has tremendous amount of uh, 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 code to get anything done. It's a very verbose language. Verbose means long-winded. So anyway, I'll end this. I'll end this here because I don't want to get into into language wars. So the point of this was: Is Python worth learning? Yes, if. It is something that uh, looks interesting to you. You find that there's work uh, in your uh, geographical area. Can you get work doing Python, assuming you want to get a job? Or maybe you have a project in mind and you're wondering, can Python suit those needs? Uh, definitely, if you want to do IoT, you want to do robotics, you want to do web apps, yes, Python could do all those things, although in terms of putting out web apps uh, that are fast and performant, you'd be better off with PHP in my opinion. Well, not in my opinion, it's a much faster runtime language, but PHP just does the web. Python does a whole bunch of other things. That's about it. I hope you found this vlog interesting. As I said earlier in a previous vlog, because I'm busy building this course, amongst other things, amongst my normal work, uh, my vlog output will slow down just a little bit for a little while while I get this course out. But the good thing is I'm looking to step it up with this course. If you've done my previous courses, my recent PHP or my JavaScript course or whatnot, you see the level that it was at. 
And I think that you'll see with this new Python course, it's going to be even higher level because I just don't go over code like everybody else. It's boring. I bring in a whole bunch of other stuff into my courses to make them, uh, to make them more relevant. We'll just leave it at that for now. Thanks for watching, guys.